While we humans debate immigration policy, the vast ecosystem that lives along the Rio Grande goes on living, as long as we allow it. If you remember, one of Trump's key campaign promises was to build a wall along the southern border to keep migrants from crossing into the U.S. As you'll hear from Bianca, efforts to build a border wall didn't begin or end with Trump, and it hasn't stopped affecting the conservationists that live and work in the region. While we were working on this story, the National Butterfly Center in Mission, Texas, announced it would be closing its doors for their foreseeable future to protect staff from right-wing harassment. The river is our lifeblood. It not only provides for the crops here that grow 365 days a year, but it provides for the wildlife and the plants, and that includes the insects. Here at the southernmost point of the United States, the climate is very hot. We are practically an irrigated desert. So the Rio Grande River keeps everyone and everything alive. My name is Mariana Trevino Wright. I am executive director of the National Butterfly Center in Mission, Texas. We are a 100 acre botanical garden the pilot project of the North American Butterfly Association. And we have planted more than 300 native plant species that are host and nectar sources for native butterflies. So you can come to the National Butterfly Center and see more butterflies than you will see anywhere else on the North American landscape. A picturesque nature preserve along one of the longest rivers in North America, the National Butterfly Center hosts benign sounding events, including the Butterfly Festival and Butterfly Bonanza. But it has found itself in the middle of a fight between the federal government and supporters of former President Donald Trump over one of the most contentious issues of modern American politics, the border wall. The unlikely foe of the federal government and anti-immigration activists has even gotten the attention of Hollywood. It was featured in an episode of political satire show Full Frontal with Samantha B. And a good old-fashioned Texas shit show! Where Trump's diverted billions of dollars from the military to build a 30-foot wall, crushing critters, and grabbing private property along the way. Yee-haw! When you talk about why we find ourselves at, you know, ground zero for this border wall fight and still in the crossroads of it, part of it has to do with the agenda that was laid well before Trump. And that is this uh, ridiculous border wall plan. The plan started literally at ground zero. In response to the 9-11 terrorist attack on the World Trade Center, Congress enacted the Real ID Act of 2005. It was an amendment to a law with the long name called the Illegal Immigration Reform and Immigration Responsibility Act. And the Real ID part comes from its main purpose of setting new standards for state driver's license licenses and IDs, but it also gave the Department of Homeland Security Secretary Authority at his sole discretion to waive federal laws as needed to speed up construction of border wall. Before it passed, the feds could only waive two federal environmental laws for border wall projects, but the Trump administration used it to waive nearly 50 federal laws, including the Clean Air Act, the Clean Water Act, and laws meant to protect Native American tribes' burial sites. That's Cameron Langford, a Houston-based reporter at Courthouse News. He's covered several lawsuits related to border wall construction in Texas, including two legal challenges brought by the National Butterfly Center. Those lawsuits challenge violations of the center's property rights and environmental laws. Our first fight was against the federal government when we found government contractors on our property 
July 20th, 2017, cutting down our trees and mowing down our brush. They explained to us that they had been sent by the federal government to clear our land for border wall. But this was nine months before any congressional vote authorizing border wall, before any appropriation funding border wall. We had received no legal notice. There was no right of entry. That's because the government had invoked the Real ID Act. It's been utilized by every president since George W. Bush to speed up construction of border barriers at the U.S.-Mexico border and waive any laws that might get in the way. And while Trump used the act most liberally, his Democratic presidential predecessor and successor have also used it. It was funded and designed under President Bush. Uh, Obama continued to build it and finish out Bush's walls. And then we get Trump elected and he wants to build more wall. And now we have Biden continuing to build and advance border wall. For the Rio Grande Valley, where we are located, the Biden administration or CBP under the Biden administration uh, just last week announced 86 new miles of border wall. This means the entire Rio Grande Valley will be walled off from our only fresh water source for about 6 million people, walled off from Falcon Dam all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. So it doesn't matter who's president. It doesn't matter if it's the red team or the blue team. But what about Biden's campaign promise not to build any more walls? No, I'm, there will not be another foot of wall constructed on my administration. Uh, what end, about the land confiscations? End, end, end stop, done, over, not going to do it. Withdraw the, 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 the lawsuits. We're out. We're not going to confiscate the land. And his executive order, the first day in office, suspending all construction at the border in order to audit Trump's projects. The Biden administration says it's to shore up the Rio Grande Valley in Texas, the flood barrier system there, and protect uh, low-lying areas of Hidalgo County, it's a border county in Texas, from ca catastrophic flooding. Department of Homeland Security spokespeople say it's supposed to be finished next spring and it won't involve any expanding of the border wall. And instead of 15-foot barriers atop levee walls like the Trump administration built, this one's supposed to be six feet tall and only serve as a guardrail for the safety of Border Patrol agents. But some area residents say Biden's DHS is trying to build shorter walls and pretend there's something different. The Biden administration claims the levee project will close breaches in the Rio Grande, which could flood due to the Trump administration's project, where it had tore down flood barrier infrastructure to make way for a border wall. Wright said it's just another example of a loophole exploited by the federal government to continue building walls at the border. Those of us who have been advocating against walls and trying to make sure that language and legislative bills and other things um, guarded against the exploitation of loopholes and such, we did not want there to be an opportunity to close gaps without gaps being defined. Because, for example, in 2018, when the 25 new miles of border wall were funded with $450 million in that omnibus appropriation. That's the one that funded border wall through the National Butterfly Center. That 25-mile area was a gap. You know, so there are, you know, 800-foot gaps and there are 800-mile gaps. <laughs> It's just a matter of how those definitions get used and exploited. And the projects don't only involve building walls or levees or filling gaps or breaches. They involve clearing areas on both sides of the border barrier 
to create what are known as enforcement zones. We call it the dead zone mm -hmm. because nothing is allowed to live there. Under the original border wall plan, under President Bush, that enforcement zone, which is devoid of vegetation and covered in material that allows there to be all weather road traffic, and that area is maintained devoid of vegetation with herbicide with poison. That in our case, they're spraying on the ground at the water table into our public water supply. It also includes the all night bright stadium lighting and that enforcement zone went from being on average 40 feet wide to now being over 150 feet wide. So it's basically quadrupled. We've got an enormous loss of habitat. When you do that, 150 foot minimum width and multiply that mile after mile after mile, you wind up with hundreds of thousands, if not millions of acres of lost habitat for a border wall that is built in most places more than a mile, one to two miles inside the United States. The levee project at the Rio Grande River not only threatens the National Butterfly Center's wildlife refuge, but it threatens an endangered cat that lives in the desert of the Southwest. From the mountains in the Sonoran Desert to the foothills of the Argentinian Andes, and all the jungles in between, lives a predator perfectly adapted to this wide range of habitats. This lone wanderer prowls the jungles at night, picking up prey with every passing kilometer. This is the prince of the jungle, the ocelot. So ocelots are an endangered wildcat they look like small leopards, basically, and conservationists say um, a lot of Texans are surprised to find that, you know, that Texas does have a native population of these cats in the state. Protecting ocelots is at direct odds with Biden's levee wall project, and it also interferes with the federal government's own plan to protect the species in Texas, where less than 50 cats are left. The inconsistency prompted the conservation nonprofit Center for Biological Diversity to threaten to sue Homeland Security over its waiver of environmental laws. And the center, they claimed in their letter that the Department of Homes, Hem, Homeland Security had violated the Endangered Species Act and the National Environmental Policy Act by not consulting with U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to make sure the project doesn't jeopardize the oscillates. And um, lack of consulting seems strange because U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has been working on an ocelot recovery plan for years where it's re acquiring land to create a five mile corridor connecting South Texas ranch land with the wildlife protection zone in Northern Mexico where there are lots of ocelots. And the goal is to increase the genetic diversity of the Texas population because they have problems from inbreeding. So they could, you know, travel to this other area in northern Mexico and interact with the ocelots there. And it would uh, improve their genetics. In that section, in South Texas, there has been a decades-long effort because like so many areas in this country, but perhaps even more concentrated, that area of South Texas has lost 95% of its native habitat, thorn scrub, um, natural habitat. My name is Brian Segui. I work for Center for Biological Diversity, and I'm the legal director of our endangered species program. Through the past decades, Fish and Wildlife Service 
uh, has painstakingly and at great expense been acquiring isolated tracts of land along the lower, I believe it's around two, 200 miles um, of the river. This uh, is just running roughshod over those efforts. They're going into these various refuge tracts and building border wall. And those populations depend on gene flow. Um, they, the populations need to be able to interact with each other they don't recognize boundaries. Um, and so a border wall can very much result in the end of the species existing in the United States. The federal government undermining its own conservation efforts isn't new. But the response from federal employees working on conservation has changed since Bush was the first to invoke the environmental law waivers. One thing we did see during the wall construction during the Bush administration that I don't think was as prevalent um, during the Trump administration is that Fish and Wildlife Service employees really pushed back. Some of the re refuge managers, Fish and Wildlife Service, um, as I mentioned, Laura Rio Grande, National Wildlife Refuge in Texas, they manage other um, wildlife refu refuges along um, the border in other states, including Cabeza Prieta, um, San Bernardino in Arizona. And some of those refuge managers really, really pushed back um, during the Bush administration and, and they paid for it professionally. They got transferred or, or um, it, wasn't, it wasn't easy for them. And it was a courageous stand and, and it did pay dividends. They were able to stop construction in some of those areas during the Bush administration, um, not so much during the Trump administration. It comes to a shoving match between Department of Homeland Security and CPB and the Fish and Wildlife Service, especially with a presidential administration that's, that's made, you know, the big, beautiful border wall its top priority. Uh, Fish and Wildlife Service is, is going to um, probably lose that fight. Protecting sensitive species along the U.S.-Mexico border hinges on the enforcement of environmental laws that are already on the books. And Congress knows this. Yet previous attempts to revoke the waiver authority were unsuccessful. With Trump's um, getting out of office, the border wall is not so much in the public eye, I would say. So I don't think there's any uh, movement on this. The last time they addressed it. House Democrats proposed a bill in 2019 to repeal the waiver authority, but it died without being put up for a vote. But Sigi said the tide may change as Congress looks to restore balance among the branches of the U.S. government more than 20 years after 9-11. Congress has been rethinking some of its authorities, some of what it did in the wake of 9-11, because it's 20 years later, um, certain war powers authority and because there was this broader, basically, abdication of legislative power to the executive branch in the wake of 9-11. Uh, of and Congress, in, in certain contexts, has been trying to reclaim that authority. Congress could fix this so easily. And fortunately, there, there is a bill that's been introduced this session, um, this Congress, H.R. 48. 48, Representative Grijalva and past Congresses has... has um, starting in the Bush administration, tried similar legislative efforts. Those haven't gained much traction thus far, um, but we're, we're, we're hoping to make a push um, this year again because they're the ones who created the problem and um, they're the ones who can, who, who can make it go away. In 2020, after Biden was elected, Arizona Congressman Raul Grijalva told me in an interview he'd work with Congress to rescind the Real ID waivers for projects at the border. And when Homeland Security announced in December it was resuming border barrier projects, Grijalva again called on Biden to remove barriers and mitigate damages caused by the Trump administration. A call that has gone unanswered for more than a decade. This is occurring, and because of the waivers of all the laws, including sacred sites, 
burial sites, cultural resources, water protection, because all those laws are waived. The Department of Homeland Security, through their contractors, considers to proceed with no understanding of the consequence and of the uh, damage that they're doing. And it's a damage that is uh, about the identity of the region, about the identity of the awesome people, and more importantly, uh, ripping uh, apart some values that are very important that you Mm -hmm. cannot replace. The southern border is a region rich in both Mexican and American culture, brimming with scenic landscapes that can, much like policy, both inspire and terrify. <laughs> 